Hey, Brian, do you know anyone that was once a teenage fundamentalist? Oh, Troy, you know that I was because you and I have a podcast called I Was a Teenage Fundamentalist. I did know that. But you know what I find myself asking these days? No, I don't, but I think you're going to tell me. What about all those things that church gave us definite answers for? What are we supposed to think about all those things now? Well, funnily enough, that's what we're doing for season five of I Was a Teenage Fundamentalist. Ooh, Brian, I sense the Lord at work here. Mm, He works in mysterious ways. And we are going to unpack these things. We're going to find out what we do think about them now. So tune in to season five of I Was a Teenage Fundamentalist, the official podcast for the Azusa Street Revival. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm not quite sure that's true, but it is available wherever you get your podcasts. (laughs) Welcome to Deconversion Therapy Podcast. This is Bonnie down in Florida coming at you with the first sunny day we've had in, I'm not kidding, maybe 28 days. Oh, nice. So like a period. This is Karen, who I don't (laughs) think... We had some sunny days in the midst of the snow, and then Mm -hmm. now it's just been rainy and dreary. But that's okay. You're my sunshine. (laughs) Hope everyone's doing well. Let me thank, before we move on, Caitlin. Caitlin, thank you for your tithe and offering to our Venmo. It really does help anybody who supports, whether through one-time offerings like Venmo or through our sponsorship that's $5 a month. We can't (laughs) thank you enough, seriously. And it's so weird that you use the word offering so loosey-goosey. I love it. it, It's so triggering. (laughs) It is. It is. I love just sort of 10% 10 people of what you make should be going. Has to go. Has to. to Or feel guilty for the rest of your (laughs) life. And we're going to send you a bill like little Karen got when she was young. Ah, uh, yeah, no, but, but you know what? Seriously. When mm-hmm. when our tithe offering envelopes came in the mail to us, and they had our names pre printed on there, it mm-hmm. was pretty pretty. It made you feel fancy as a kid. I was gonna say it was like <laughs> mail. We were like, oh, I'm a sorry. mail. <laughs> I'm very important. Let me go over here with my polyester tie dye skirt that my mom's making me wear, and right. uh, open my important mail. I've got Bonnie, bills. your mail got came. Bills. <laughs> We're so excited. That's like when I was excited to get braces on. I'm like, accessories. Yeah. Look at me. Your family probably didn't get the TV guide, is my guess. Or did you? We did. Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. I just didn't. Maybe since there were four of us, exactly, Uh I didn't take it into the bathroom and read it (laughs) as much as you did. Oh, thanks. Well, it it was definitely the highlight of my week. And the fact that it came Mm -hmm. every week is it's such a nice bolt, you know, or jolt of uh, dopamine. Am I looking for? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the TV guide's here. I was just reading. I wish I could give her uh, kudos to someone on threads who said, who's like, you know, got letters behind her name, saying that we don't get dopamine from actually getting the thing as much as we do anticipating the thing. So she was saying, if you want a dopamine lift in the morning, think of three things you're looking forward to. Rather than even three things you have or three things, you know, you're going to reward yourself right away with. I'm like, that's very true. I'm telling you, when I am old and decrepit, I guess people who are Christian are like, I look forward to the pearly gates, but I want to have something I think I'm looking forward to. Because there are so many elderly people who don't have nothing but the hearse well, <laughs> to look forward to. Let, let me tell you, as a lot of them are my clients, they totally are obsessed with the mail. 
They are yeah. very so, obsessed with getting back mail. To, <laughs> back to us as children. <laughs> right. And it doesn't have to be anything addressed to them. Resident will do. Yeah. You know, so what we do with my <laughs> yeah. 93-year-old father is we get the mail. My brother lives there. And uh, we just go through it and give him what we think he should get. Because yeah. there are so many saying his name, that he's been picked, that he's a winner, yeah. or some right-wing propaganda or whatever it is. And even if it's right. about nothing, we're like, let's not give it to him. It's just going to screw up his brain, you know. So yeah. we at least get to rifle through. I know, yeah. it's a federal Let me, <laughs> let me tell you, though, when, when life gets kind of shitty for me, I start to... In my brain, name those little tent pole things that are going to be my dopamine hits throughout the week, and okay. it's it's there's there's a podcast on Monday that I get, and mm-hmm. then there's a second podcast like on Monday that I get, and I save it for Tuesday, Ooh. and then <laughs> right, and then uh, there is a podcast on Thursday that I get. Um, uh-huh. there's, there's an, there's a YouTube segment on Fridays that I get and I have to save it with all my heart for Friday after work to watch when I yeah. get home. And now I've started watching it with the puppy and I'm like, come on, we're going to go watch Seth Meyers corrections. <laughs> That's my, <laughs> my favorite thing. Um, and then there's a Friday podcast that I'll save for Saturday, you know, and it's like, it's like those little things. Um, if they each have, I agree, fair. like every day little thing, and damn, I love my coffee so much. Yes, coffee too. I'm doing too. my fucking yep. Wordle yep, yep. that I almost didn't Wordle. get today. And oh, it can yes. seem really dumb, but just those small things. And I think you and I were talking about how I also heard someone smart say that happiness is not the default mood. So people mm-hmm. who are chasing after and wondering why they aren't happy all the time, because you're normal, because yeah, yeah. that is something that you can train yourself to do, but it's not like uh, homost- homostasis. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Or homeostasis. One, put, put the <laughs> Romeo stasis. more stasis. Okay, so one second, can we talk about Wordle? First no. of all, do you mm-hmm. play regular version or the hard version? <laughs> Whatever they gave me, to me, <laughs> okay. it's hard. It's not hard. I get it every time, but I would like to tell people I do the hard well, one since I didn't know there was one. The hard version is where if you've already guessed, you know, two letters, you can't use those two letters again in your next guess. So in my opinion, oh. it is the more logically easier version because it eliminates okay, things. Okay. So, all right, all right. so that that is what I was wondering. Um, I I also I had a streak going of like eighty four, and then one day I just forgot to play. I don't know what was going on in my life, <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm like, oh fuck it, I don't even care about streaks, but. And so, like, it's weird how your priorities change. Like, it used to be streak. Now it's getting it in three. Um, somehow that's important to me. And oh, then if yeah, I don't, no. if I get it in, if I get it in four, I'm angry because I'm like, well, I'd rather have it in five or six because that makes my three versus four look worse. <laughs> so, sh- yeah. Anyway. See, I am not like that. Once again, I am not internally motivated to fight with myself. I just <laughs> okay, like, fine. Uh, I'm dumb, you know, or whatever it is. But yeah, I I haven't challenged myself in that. I just love going through that. I listen to my crime junkie on Mondays, so I've got a bit of the mm-hmm. same thing. But I should probably look for find something else to also just zhuzh up. My day. Wouldn't it be nice if it was exercise? Um, I wanted to say we get little questions now on Spotify if you Mm -hmm. are listening on that. So you can ask questions. I do have to do an extra step to get in there, which means I forget sometimes. So So you might not get an answer. (laughs) Exactly. Right away. 
but you can ask questions on different episodes. Someone wrote, ah, stop yakking and get to the, to the topic okay. already. And All right, this fine. is Here what I have to say. <laughs> you get to fast forward, and it's no, nothing against people who just want the meat of it. But you and me, our goal, Bonnie, since we've known each other since we were one year old, this was about relationship. Today, you're like, I would love to just record and laugh and hang out. Like, this is mm-hmm. about relationship with us and relationship with other people. And I am Meaning the listeners. Fine. The listeners and yeah. the followers and so forth. So you're not going to find us uh, skipping parts like this. But you're welcome to fast forward. It doesn't bother us, but this is where people get to know us and get to know our flaws because in this they are many industry <laughs> shh, in this industry of podcast deconstruction anything there are a lot of people who are vying for different authoritative positions and our preambles yeah. will will indicate why we should never be categorized <laughs> as any kind of thought leaders or people to look up to. So we like to do this. Let me, can I also tell you that I used to hate the preamble stuff in My Favorite Murder, and I was like, just get me to the story. But then when I got to know them more, now it's it's skewed. I'm it, That's more my favorite part sometimes yeah, than yeah. the stories. Same, same for me. Yeah. And again, I can fast forward and also, there's just, yeah, it's a different kind of podcast, and that's fine. This is the way we like I, to do it. Uh, one more quick question for you. When you go to rewatch certain sitcoms that you love, mm-hmm. do you have a feeling that you're looking for? Like, I feel really, really safe, I realized, in watching 30 Rock because – my my eyes in through everything is through Liz Lemon because that is my <laughs> my life and my job. Right. It's right. constant morons trying to mm-hmm. wrangle them. And or at least I feel that way. Maybe I'm yeah. the moron. Could mm-hmm. be true. Part of the time, yeah, absolutely. But it was really sweet. The episode I was watching the other night, Jack was totally there for her. And like they do care for each other and mm-hmm. they are opposing political views and they still care for each other so like it makes me feel safe watching that show right where because if, that's the old days where you could feel safe with uh, that kind of i know okay go to go to go to heck for thinking that and saying that but i was thinking the other day like oh i'd like to watch uh, arrested development again but it's sometimes so anxiety producing knowing that they are all just all fucked up and just right, a right. big mess, especially when people compare the characters in that to the Trump family. <laughs> like, yeah, I just exactly. don't know if I can watch this level of what is actually going on in some people's families. Right. So yeah. anyway, anyway, so um, but is that why you feel like you like to go to the office and rewatch it? Because it feels safe? Probably. And I mean, they're also like self... Uh, encapsulated. I like sometimes to binge a lot of stuff, but self-encapsulation. I don't know. I think just um, taking responsibility off my brain and making someone else work it for me is why I like watching or binging in general. Uh, But anything that takes me out of our current realities sometimes is lovely. And I know that is from a place of privilege. I absolutely get that. People, black women in the U.S., uh, people of color in general, LGBT, we get that just watching TV doesn't always bring anything to you like it does to people who walk around in privilege. So I just want to, I love to add that. I also just want to add in here that straight men who listen to us, thank you. Thank you for not being so insecure about women talking that you just have to put some contrarian view every five seconds. I have been finding this more and more on posts. 
Instagram, TikTok threads. If I post a meme, they're like, well, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, then make your own meme because that has very little to do with what I just posted. The, the desire, the absolute need for some men to comment something yeah. contrarian on every fucking thing is exhausting. Sure. Absolutely it is, exhausting. It is. It is. And think, it, it, uh, try to comfort yourself by realizing how many are not commenting. I mean, it does take somebody who has a special need to make a shit comment. I mean, they I have, agree, but it's hard. It's when hard. You, it is hard. Especially if you work at something, you know, like I posted one today just about, you know, um, I, I can't remember if it was something about Southern Baptists and how they originated in slavery and blah, blah, blah. And then here comes a guy just saying, why don't you do one on Planned Parenthood? You know how corrupt, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then goes on and on to say I'm shallow and blah. And I'm just like, what is in you that I know. you can't go, you know what? The Bible does say. Like, treat everyone nicely. So I think we can judge people who aren't living up to the Bible. Why Make your own on fucking Planned Parenthood. It should have... <laughs> yeah, anyway. Read, okay. read the room, buddy. So today we're going to talk about one thing that is your favorite thing, and that's Christian music. You love to rock to it. You love to roll to it. Uh, you and don't you like to dance to it. didn't say the other word. Because <laughs> that's a sin. What? You didn't say the third word that is also equally not my favorite thing. Festivals. Oh, yeah. I know. Same here. I just don't like a lot of people. And festival, it is, the word itself sounds so celebratory, but it is turned to me to feel so uh, urine-smelling crowded. (laughs) <laughs> that I have no desire. So we're going to talk about Christian music festivals. I know that you and I, did you go to Night of Joy in Orlando when they used to do that? No. That was so, at Disney World, and they right. let a whole bunch of Christians loose in the dark to, to listen to Christian music. Or as we called, Sanctified Flirt Nights. So... I think I knew someone who was in a band, we're not going to get into it, and they were performing before, I think, like Petra or Whiteheart or something. There were a bunch of Christians everywhere. I don't know how many years they did that, but they stopped doing it. Uh, but you mean they used what? To have who stopped doing it? Different Disney. Disney. They used to have okay. a lot of different things like that. I don't know if they still have gay days, but... They had like these nearly official times that people could express themselves differently, but I don't know if they do now. I would also suspect that you don't know this because you're not in the, hey, let's go to Christian festivals at Disney World kind of um, arena anymore. It's not anything of interest to you. So maybe they're doing it even more. They're not. But are you saying <laughs> that I'm not invited? Is that? No. You're no, not on the mailing true. list anymore. I am not, thank goodness. Christian music festivals started a long, long time ago, Bonnie. Uh, they were the brainchild of God, uh, but they didn't really start kicking off until sort of the Jesus movement in 1972 when a founder, a a young man named Billy Graham, decided, hey, let's combine me telling people they're going to hell with people singing. So they had what was called Explo 72. The people that they had there, I sort of wouldn't mind. I did like Larry Norman. So they had Larry Norman. Larry Norman. Yes. That doesn't sound like a very exciting performer. This girl, this girl. I it's told me. you she wasn't saved, everyone. Larry but Norman. <laughs> Larry Norman sang Lord Liar Lunatic. Which one is it? Oh. It's very good. 
a group called Love Song, but listen to this. Andre Crouch, Chris Christofferson, and Johnny Cash. So they had people who were also big attractions in the mainstream world who were okay. Christian. And it brought a lot of people. It was at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Well, some people were like, what? There's music? There's possibly money to be made. Let's see what we can do by setting up our own. So there was someone named Harry Thomas that started Creation Festival in 1979. Hmm. That's in Pennsylvania, and they would have everyone, Newsboys, Jars of Clay, Toby Max, Skillet, uh, all those bands. So Creation Fest... I guess, kept going until recently when I was putting in something else into the Googler. Up pops, you know, the questions that people most often ask. They'll Mm -hmm. put a little section on your Google page, and it said, what happened to Creation Fest 2023? So I look, and it says, (laughs) in late March of last year, the festival's website had a pop-up window saying it was the end of the long-standing event. Thanking everyone Mm. who'd taken part and providing statistics on people, you know, who were saved or whatever over all the years. And ticket holders were promised refunds and a launch of a new vision for 2024 was mentioned. If you know what that new vision Mm. is, feel free to tell (laughs) us. Not that we want anything to do with it. But (laughs) feel free to think it. Quietly. So I ask people, write in letters if you've gone to any of these events. So the one that I was just referring to, someone named Joy wrote in, and she said, Back in the late 90s, my youth group attended the Creation Music Festival several years in a row. Imagine dozens of teens packed in a church van driving up the East Coast for hours on end. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Sleep-deprived and hyped up on Surge. That is (laughs) not... What Surge? Is that a a caffeinated soda? Yeah, yeah. They're clearly younger than we are. There's a reason they don't make that soda anymore, she says. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We slept in tents and used the communal bathrooms, just as clean as you would expect (laughs) from an outdoor music festival. One year, a youth group parent built us a portable shower out of a plastic barrel, so we truly felt like we were living in the lap of luxury. But of course, the best (laughs) part of the festival was getting to listen to our favorite bands in the sweltering summer heat. My best friend and I stalked the artist buses hoping for an autograph, or if we were lucky... An awkward Christian side hug. <laughs> I, I wish I could remember all the bands we saw, but only one is permanently burned in my memory, DC Talk. My bestie and I rushed the stage screaming, Toby! Oh my gosh. For our favorite Toby Mac, obviously, over and over at the top of our lungs until the people nearby asked us to stop. Cringy for sure, but it's probably one of my favorite memories from my pre-deconstruction days. DC talk. (laughs) (laughs) I loved, I mean, that's the thing. When you're on those buses, you know you sit as much as you can near your crush, and then you pretend to fall asleep so your head can fall on them. Oh, those days of, of true Christianity. We went on one of those trips where we went all the way from West Palm Beach to Gatlinburg, and one of our Mm. friends was somehow educated enough in driving the bus, and they let him drive the bus, and he was a speed freak, not the drug. He zoomed, and I even remember at that age having to go... Just give it up. Just forget about how fast he's going. Give it to the Lord. <laughs> give it That's to the right. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and he would be driving and driving and then turn the lights out. And then when he'd come up on another car, he'd flash the lights on. Like, this is not good. Even as like <laughs> an 18, 19 year old, I was like, this is irresponsible. <laughs> Something bad is going to happen. <laughs> and yet it didn't. Uh, he was actually the lead singer of the band you had referenced before. So, really, 
Lead. Really? Lead. Oh. Yeah. Well, we didn't go to any of these festivals with their heathen music. Uh, the next one that people talk about a lot is Cornerstone Festival. It started in 1984. It looks like it went through 2012, but this is the one that I heard most about. And this one would have all our favorites. Here we go again. DC Talk, Audio Adrenaline, Petra, Reliant K, Five Iron Frenzy. So a little more rockerish in some <laughs> respects, Wait. but I'm sure they just covered the whole gamut. Hold on. Reliant K sounds like two different cheap cars mushed together. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there like a Plymouth it's Reliant like, and a K car? Uh, there is. Um, it's Kmart. That's right. It's a Reliant. So Josh Miller wrote to us. He said, went to Cornerstone Music Festival in 2002 as an 18-year-old chaperone for my church's oh. youth group. There you go. There you go. The showers oh. were filled <laughs> with turds. This is what? unrelated to my story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's related. I'm sorry. <laughs> And he said, I was terrified of pooping in public. The porta potties were horrendous, which was probably why people were duking in the showers. Anyway, anyway, I went a full week without number twoing, and as a result, oh, no. had to be brought to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> in a small town on the 15-hour drive back. <laughs> that is so sad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's so sad. Because oh, that's, that's not something to laugh oh. at. Oh. But you know all his friends had to pray over him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh my gosh, so, and you'd have to he he probably eventually had to tell somebody. Like my He had to, oh, I had to tell my youth leader. Like are ER. Why didn't you poop before? Because there's poop. Well uh, that hurt my eye drop tears. Oh um, my God. He said, I also met the mother of one of the members of MXPX. She liked my hair. And the lead singer of Pedro the Lion invited me to have drinks with him in his trailer. Oh my God. Yeah, my that eyeballs. sounds risky. Drinks. You know I don't think that was from Josh, though. Um, <laughs> that one... Did you just skip and do a different story? Uh, no, I just... Oh. You see her... So that one is anonymous, and I, God, I okay. love it. Ah. So here's <laughs> another one about Cornerstone. Would you like to read it? All right, so here's somebody else about Cornerstone. It says, I could go on for days about Cornerstone, but let's focus on, I think, 2005. Years prior, a group of us from Cincinnati and a group from Springfield, Missouri, had formed a campsite alliance oh God, <laughs> from our mutual love of Wesley Willis called Marsa Street slash Pete Rose Way. Oh, oh my gosh. This is so funny because I'm like, this is what I heard. <laughs> With all those names. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> right by the footbridge leading away from the merch tents just by Buck Buck Hill. Okay. One night at 3 a.m., a wrestling mat appeared. Appeared. <laughs> Done. That's it. Again, we can finish that. And drunk cornerstone wrestling started. <laughs> drunk? Yeah, what? girl. What? Remember, oh my God. some denominations allowed drinking oh. and therefore, you know, the oh, okay. slippery slope of more than one drink. Well, then it says the clear champion was a fellow named Caleb whose battle cry was rock and roll McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Security showed up and very nicely told us to wrap it up. At that point, a few smoke bombs were tossed. <gasps> oh, my God. See? It's oh, man. my God. They had to come prepared with smoke bombs, the police. This is a real rock festival, oh, Bonnie. Oh, my gosh. 
Uh, let's see. One of the Springfield kids has this light so bright it could trigger the sensors on the poles, blacking the whole area out. Ludacris's word of mouth started blaring from an <laughs> SUV, and a full-blown party riot broke out. Our buddy Robert, a usually deep introvert, was dancing around a fire eating discarded raw chicken. Oh, my God. R.I.P. <laughs> oh, wait. Who... Brings raw chicken and then discards it. Sheltered kids. And it's raw like, chicken. Mom, can we go? It's Christian. Oh my These gosh. These people have never yeah. like lived outside the bubble. Wow. Oh my God. Discarded raw chicken. Okay. Uh, let me just stop there and say how many times are you walking through the parking lot of your local grocery store and there's a chicken bone? Chicken bones are fucking everywhere. Do you notice this as well? I will now start noticing it. I will manifest okay. them. Okay. Okay, back to the letter. A security cart was driven off a small embankment, and we Shit. wound up with a security radio, which provided us with oh. days of fun. By the end of the week, there was a pillow fight that ended in a shattered arm. That would have been me. Shit. And many visits to Cornerstone Jail. <laughs> they had muffins. <laughs> so, I mean, we have drunkenness Vandalism, stealing. Yeah. I don't think well, here we go. poison some manillas against, but okay. There's more to come. From that year on, our campsite was circled on the security map as the ghetto. Over oh, the years, great. many yeah, racism. <laughs> <laughs> Many shenanigans were had, beverages consumed, wedding proposals made, debaucheries oh, botched, and in 2008 they even set up mirrors as art to blind us all. <laughs> 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 By 2009, the Cincinnati contingency was mostly married off or had kids on the way, and the Springfield crew had grown thin. Even though most of us are in our 40s, I bet we would risk throwing our backs out to have another week of that Illinois campground. <laughs> Screaming Wesley Willis lyrics and making fun of senior. Oh my god, that's hilarious. See, that's at wow. least how to have fun. Those people we would have absolutely, you and I would have told on for sure. Oh because I, I would, would have been be scared. Like, this is unbecoming of a God's land. And um, it's really gonna influence people. You might have told on them I would have been scared. That is mm. just my nature to like look at them go. There's going to be trouble and go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be trouble in what city? I forget. River. Um, but that's the thing. Who knows also how many people were homeschooled that finally got to go to something. This is a youth event. And yes, it made yeah. a lot of money. But I don't think that they made huge amounts of profits. I could be wrong, but it seems like these were, you know, just trying to make it buy most of these type things. Yeah. There's wow. another one that came along right around 1998, started by Dan Russell called Soul Fest. They had third oh, day no. casting crowns. Uh, my ex, Michael W. Smith, Jeremy Camp, haven't heard that name in a long time. And I just love, it was in New Hampshire. I love how a lot of these were in the heart, the heart of secular land. There's a map you can New find Hampshire? on Christian, yes, Christian Festival Association, which really shows a majority of things being in the Midwest or even Northeast. And yeah. I love the names of it. It's like Uprise Festival, Sunrise, yeah. S-O-N. Yeah. But these Rock also the sound Smokies. very much like youth group names. Exactly. Thrive Fest. One Fest, City on the Hill, Off the Charts, Living Out Loud, Life Light. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Life Fest, or no, Life Fest. Who knows? Uprise, all that. There were very few that are still going on closer to California, Nevada, Washington. You know, they don't, they don't have the touch of the Lord with them. But here's a story from Ryan about Soul Fest. I grew up going to Inside Out Soul Festival in New Hampshire, now known as Soul Fest. As a teen, I made the switch to working at the festival on the production end of things. You just wanted to carry keys. 
15 years of working <laughs> at a Christian music festival. 15 years. This is the inside. This is the AV people. This is where we get our information, Bonnie. 15 <laughs> years of working at a Christian festival certainly leaves many stories, I can tell. I've said it yeah. on sharing this email. Don't read it. I'm going to surprise you, Bonnie. Oh, gonna I'm, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it, but what I'm wondering is if you're on the AV squad of something like this, do you kind of get your jollies by catching people doing bad things? That's all I'm wondering. Based on our AV squad at our church, like they kind of got off on catching. Going to do some bad things themselves, but yeah, they were still always in the know. Good question. Yeah. Good question. All right. So that's my prediction. About this, okay. this letter. Well, this says that they have settled on an email that the festival received day one of the 2018 festival. This email was immediately printed and framed in the staff office <laughs> and gave us all a good chuckle. I've not edited any part of the following message. This is how we received <laughs> it. Enjoy. All caps. We are disgusted with Soul Fest and will <laughs> never return. Inclusion of the satanic and repulsive hip heart quote artists, absurd acoustics with complete harmonic distortion because <laughs> the low frequencies abuse. All right, that that I don't even. What does that mean? Bass. I, it means this is too loud. They over bassed. I guess no, I think exactly. it means too much. Boom, boom, boom. I think it meant that there might have been people of color rapping. I don't know, but we'll move that on. Well, we'll move sure. on. We are no longer interested in the so-called quote Christian soul fest. It is not all caps. You commercialize and ruin what used to be a faith-inspired event. That used to be magical. Magical? Hmm. Isn't that witchcraft? Mm. <laughs> Try again, buddy. It is now rude, pagan, and not enjoyable in the least. This person is mm. upset that Pat Boone no longer plays at these things. It's like watching <laughs> three good scenes of a play and then having to watch someone take a shit on stage. Oh, oh my God. I know. Nice language. Nice the language. language. Oh, here we go. Uh, here We're going to come in with the expertise. I'm a radio frequency engineer by trade, and your absurd overmodulation okay. of low frequencies <laughs> from 40 to 70 hertz exceeds OSHA safety <laughs> limits. First, and completely oh. distorts and destroys the potential beauty of subtle musical harmonies, dynamic range, acoustic fidelity, Blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to read the rest. And then they say, and the hip-hop artists are, all caps, disgusting. Their nonsense yeah. lyrics included direct and inferred profane and absolutely inappropriate messages to an audience who painfully listened through the disturbing diatribe. I think it was diatribe. We nearly left several times, and in retrospect, we <laughs> should Almost. have. <laughs> <laughs> my God, my conclusion indicates, this is a book report, uh-oh, my conclusion indicates that your event planners or corporate sponsors have nothing but Neanderthalic eh, understanding of crowd demographics. Are you so desperate to create a lineup? Oh that gosh. you infused the absurd racial, social, and inner city drug abuse referenced music to a group of culturally, culturally diametrically opposing God fearing Christians in rural New Hampshire. There you go. <laughs> we knew we'd get the racist in rural dog New Hampshire. whistles. Oh um, my gosh. Talk to any population, data analytics, marketing. All right. Burp, burp. Oh my gosh. So what is he, and he said stupid, stupid, stupid. So let's remember what he said. I would like his name, please. I'm gonna send this to the NAACP. Okay, <laughs> mostly though, because I can care less, obviously you don't, now about the economic outcomes of your concerts, it's the shame you have brought upon what to be used to be a faith-based event. 
God would damn you for what you have done. I love loving Christians. Shame on you. Ready? For urinating on the faith of your audience. (laughs) I'm glad it didn't say face. Soul Fest is a fact. <laughs> Soulfest is effectively ruined with the stench of that howl. Oh my God, I can't even read it. Soulfest is effectively ruined with the stench of the foul hip hop defecation remaining at Gunstock. I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> Our rich foul memories defecation. of Soulfest have been erased by your ill-conceived, poorly executing, completely inappropriate sellout to pop culture. I think it's just, I mean, isn't a music festival keeping up with the times anyway? Do you want magical music? Are you wanting Gregorian chants? I mean, it's always been common day. That's me just adding my little two cents in. Oh, my gosh. Um... Let me see. This guy uh, took pen to paper and sent a letter. This, this guy went on and on, and I can't even keep going with all the weird things he said, uh, but it, it goes pretty crazy. And then at the end, he goes, in summary, I don't know if you're still reading this, but sincere, <laughs> but sincere shame on you. And I can only imagine the power of God's mercy to forgive you. Your you <laughs> list for the reality. Oh. I don't know if you're still reading this. <laughs> Good riddance, soul fest, and never oh. again for us. What a train wreck you've created. Oh my God. I wow. love sort of the unhinged you must listen to me statements mm-hmm. by who I am. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just assume there's a white man. That's all I'm going to say. And just, you know, when he's like, and the frequency of the 40 to 70 hertz, I'm the expert. <laughs> and I should tell you, well, sir, get in your rocking chair, turn on the Gatlin brothers and just stay at home. Well, I have to agree with him, though. Like sometimes when sound is really loud, it will just make your whole body hurt. Okay. All right, Bonnie. <laughs> I think you should write a letter to that. But oh, isn't I that will. what they go to festivals for? I mean, that would be yeah. festival. That would not be church music. I get that. Let us let us pause right here to tell about the time that you had never been to a professional concert before. But I had. So some shaming time. Great. I love this one. No, it's just, it's the cutest thing. And I always love telling people this. Um, Let's go. (laughs) I had been to a U2 concert. So I was like, I know how concerts work. And you and I were getting ready to go to Brian Adams. And you hadn't been to a concert that big before. And your comment was, I sure hope the person in the row behind us doesn't sing along with them. (laughs) That I'm, like, I'm going to be able so, to hear it anyway. It was so such a my sweet comment. crush. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. And I remember, like, it was probably at Miami Music Bowl. No, it was somewhere in Miami usually, was it? What, the concert? Yeah. Oh, it was the Hollywood Sportatorium. How do you remember this shit? All I remember is... Because concerts is, were everything. Yeah. I had a crush on him so big, and I remember, like, people were throwing bras up there, and we're like, what can we throw? Because we're so, like, (laughs) chaste, and we're like, a sock? I don't know. (laughs) What would Christian girls throw? And I remember our friend Amy going, throw me, because (laughs) we were just, I mean, he did have some Boris Becker acne issues, but it's all right, because... You know, we loved him as a whole. Did you know that we have a newsletter? What? No one told me that. (laughs) Right there in the show notes. We've got a free version with media and resources that go with each episode, plus our paid sponsorship coven, where we share personal news and breaking scandals that we don't cover on the show. I do love when we Zoom with the coven. Yeah, we absolutely could not do this without them. So keep in touch. Join the newsletter in the links below. Thanks. Right on. (laughs) 
All right. And just going in the timeline, there are a bunch of other places. Rock the Universe started in 1998 at Universal Orlando Resort. And that Mm -hmm. had like for King and Country, Lauren Daigle, all those things. Kingdom Bound started in 1987. Again, Mm. the same old, you know, uh, Casting Crows, Newsboys type thing. That was in New York. We have a live festival. Then, ready? Fish Fest. That sounds terrible (laughs) till you remember (laughs) the radio station, the Christian one, the fish Oh, you know, with yeah. the ichthys. So they had all the same people, and it would be in various locations. Supposedly it's still going. That's probably more of a marketing tool, you know, because they're a radio well, station. I wonder if anybody hears Fish Fest and thinks PH Fish, the band that's kind of like Grateful Dead-esque. Oh, right. Um, fish Fest. Yeah. Or do they just think of a big fish fry? Exactly. <laughs> I've gone chips? to that's right the one in Cheese Expo. I now have this fish fest on my list. <laughs> I cannot wait. And that's why there's discarded raw chicken because it's fish fest. <laughs> What's that next letter? <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, just a lot more of these festivals. Hillsong Conference, which I attended. Ugh. Thank you very much. In Sydney, Australia. Awakening Music Festival uh, is still going, I see, and that's Chant for Change. That Mm. had Bethel Music, Elevation Worship. That seems like more of a praise and worship type of thing. So this person's story says, Hi, on Instagram, you asked for Christian music festival stories. Here is mine, 100% true, hand on my heart. (laughs) <laughs> I'm at Spirit West Coast, late 90s. Most of the shows <laughs> I'm going to are the alternative stage. And I keep running into this girl at the same shows named Katie. She's a year younger than me and is from Santa Barbara. We became friends and hung out during the festival. There's some sort of amateur performance competition, and she tells me she's going to sing at it, and I wish her luck but didn't attend. As the festival wraps up, we exchange AOL Instant Messenger usernames and addresses and kept in touch that next year or two. I know where this is going. I know where this is going, yeah. Eventually we lose contact, but I see Katie did, in fact, get some success in the (laughs) Christian music scene, and I remember buying one of her albums at my local Christian bookstore. Good for her, I thought. A number of years later, I'm floored to see her on the cover of Rolling Stone. Apparently, the Katie I was friends with is Katy Perry, and Perry is her stage (laughs) name. When I knew her, her name was Katie Hudson. Oh, which is funny, because it's not Kate Hudson. Um, There you go. I was aware of an artist named Katy Perry as far as her being a pop star from her song I Kissed a Girl and etc., but never listened to her music or saw any photos of her, so I was totally unaware that they were the same person. I'm not at all a person who wants to meet celebrities just to meet them, but I would love to meet her all these years later and ask if she remembers me and that Spirit West Coast Festival. I won't give it away, but I still remember her AOL IM username (laughs) as proof if I ever get the chance to talk to her, albeit my guess is it's very unlikely. So yeah, that's the story on how I was friends with the most famous person I've ever met. Ah, that's sweet. And absolutely, I bet you any amount she would remember. You yeah, know? yeah, it, I think so, too. Um, and that's it. So, like, there were a lot of people who started out in Christian and then went totally secular or at least tried to make a crossover and stay Christian. We can't do a whole episode on that, but it's fascinating. But, yeah, once you have a preacher's kid in there, though, it's going to go sideways, which it did. yeah. Did you see that thing recently where it was on Instagram and it said, the funny thing is you put Katy Perry's face on Paula Deen's head and it's still Paula Deen. <laughs> so that's a visual for you guys to think of. They look alike? Yeah, when you put Paula Deen's hair on Katy Perry's face, it looks like Paula Deen. Wow. I did not yeah. know that. I'll find All it right. for you. So here's another one. This story starts out like most of them. I was a diehard youth grouper in the late 90s and also went to a Christian school, we understand. So I was 
fully mainlining the Kool-Aid. As is common in the world, anyone on a worship team wanted to be a Christian music icon one day. Absolutely. Sure. Including me, especially after Jennifer Knapp came on the scene. She was the coolest ever. I bought and learned the guitar and did the coffee house circuit with her songs and had her posters, was on her marketing, quote, street team, and was completely <laughs> enamored. So I got to see Jennifer Knapp. I was introduced to Jennifer Knapp's music just recently. This is Karen talking, not the letter. Yeah. When I went to go see Flamey Grant and Derek Webb at this small little, their first concert together, which is now ballooned into Flamey Grant and Derek Webb having these huge profiles. Derek was just on the Jen Hattemaker show, and uh, Derek is up for a Queer Tea and many other awards. But Jennifer Knapp was there, and everyone's like, woohoo, Jennifer. Well, I'm sorry, I did not know you, Jennifer. I was being a missionary sacrificing life and limb <laughs> to bring in some Christians to listen to your music. I did not know her, but she was fantastic, had this great energy, um, just like down-to-earth person. So oh, let cool. me continue with this person who is talking about her. When I was about 17, I went to this Spirit and Song CCM Music Fest at Kings Island in Cincinnati. We know it well. Kings Island. Is that the one that gives you free sunscreen and Cokes? Don't know. <laughs> Where she played and did a meet and greet. And I met her and have a photo with her and was shaking for hours afterwards. Aww. It was somehow, I know, it was somehow a sign to me that I needed to be just like her. We know. We, we okay. understand God's talking to you. God is telling you you're going to be a great rock star. We've heard this. God's told me to. <laughs> I even moved to Nashville. I've probably met you then. Oh, boy. Eventually to pursue a b music business degree. Let me guess, Belmont. I gave up on it and got a generic business degree once the college life gave me enough cynicism. Understand. Much later, after detoxing from my early brainwashing, I joined Roller Derby and in the Whoa. best cliche, realized I was super gay. Of course. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> and so is Jennifer Knapp. She's out as a gay woman now. Eventually, I ended up getting into a well-known, rather liberal, queer-affirming divinity school to s support my religious detox. Seems counterintuitive, but it worked. First day of wow. orientation, 17 years since King's Island, I met my new classmate. Who was it? Jennifer Knapp. Out, wow. queer musician, also detoxing from religious trauma. Let me say, Jennifer F. and Knapp. We did become class buddies over the two and a half years the master's degree took. The 17-year-old in me freaked out inside, but 34-year-old me did not reveal that I had had a poster of her in my room growing up, though I told her Aww. I had been a fan. We were just a couple of spiritually traumatized lesbians trying to process it all. <laughs> Let me tell you, she had the same cringe reaction about her history as a CCM artist that I have when I confess to people that I was once in youth group, mime drama, <laughs> a group for Jesus. And yeah, that was a thing. Um, yes, mime you drama. know my history. I do know mime. Um, I don't know what that full circle experience really meant other than it made me fully accept my identity as an ex-evangelical lesbian. And I'm the happiest and most hopeful person I've ever been. We lost touch when I moved across the country after graduation but Jennifer Knapp is still kicking ass and has some mu new music that's fantastic, and you should definitely check it out. Much love, Kate. It's so that's cool. Sweet. That's nice. Let me also tell you there was a comment on some Instagram post, you know, the garbage that comes my way is like, oh, we're <laughs> going to post something from Eric Clapton. Oh, okay, that's modern. And somebody <laughs> comments there. It's always the same shitty comment from some fart oh, they don't make good music like this anymore. And oh, then somebody said, 
yeah, they do. You're just too lazy to look for it. And I'm like, ooh, Bam. I liked that. Nice, concise exactly. comment back. Yeah. And uh, I just think I bet there's everything. so much good music out there that I don't know about that would be yeah. really good. Yeah. And the whole, I can't even get into the Taylor Swift and how many people are threatened by that woman. I find it hilarious. I don't find it funny for her. She's obviously getting all sorts of garbage thrown her way. But my God, people yeah. are so into the teardown culture from behind the keyboard, which may also be me sometimes. Okay. All right. This next one says, I grew up in Europe as an MKPK, missionary Ooh. kids, pastor's kid, with evangelical post-hippie Jesus movement era missionary mm-hmm. pastor parents. My dad ran an urban youth outreach coffee house in Basel, Switzerland for much of the 1970s. Nice. Through that, he ended up being involved with Christian music concerts and music festivals in our area. So we got to see Randy Stonehill. Whoa. The, to me, these are all names that they came up with on a Simpsons episode. Sure. Uh, my dad yeah, translated big. for Randy Stonehill on stage. Larry Norman. Oh, wait, at mm-hmm. least I recognize that one from mocking uh, his from boring earlier? name before. Okay. Yeah. Mark Hurd hosted Karen Lafferty, Seek Ye First writer. Uh, gotcha. Our home based church was Belmont Church in Nashville, home of Amy hmm. Graham, Michael W. Smith, Dogwood, and many others. In 1982. I also went there. That's yeah? what I was going to say. Was your With Amy church? Grant and Michael W. Smith. Yeah. Did you go there because of her when you moved to Nashville? Like, well, I may as no. well fucking go where Amy Grant goes. Exactly. I am trying to remember how I ended up there. I think my brother, because he lived in the area and I was looking for a church mm. and he just said, right. you probably like Belmont. So, um, All right. So then it says in 1982, my family attended a Christian music festival held in a Roman ruin amphitheater in a small Swiss town. Wow. Cool. After many local acts, the headliner was Barry Maguire. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Before he came on, he got up and introduced as a special guest, Amy Grant, who was not on the lineup. That'd That's exciting. Mm-hmm. At the time, she was still somewhat up and coming. Age to age was out that year. She would have been 21. But we, of course, had all her albums. We managed to get backstage. I think my dad had some pull. We were chatting with Barry McGuire when my mom saw Amy Grant nearby. She mm-hmm. went up to her and said, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. To which Amy said, blah, blah, blah. We pray for you in church every Sunday. What? She was odd to have met us. 13-year-old me was gloating. Fast forward to the mid-80s, we have relocated to Nashville, and it's my high school years. Once in a while, Amy Grant would come do stuff with our church youth group, sing-alongs, and mini private concert sets. The Koyanoia Coffee House, the where Kwan she got her Nia start. Ch- what? Hold on. Because <laughs> you don't like my I actually taught Sunday school a bit in the Koyanoia Coffee House. I wonder if Kwan-a-nia. we overlapped. Yeah, wow. uh, which was right next to Belmont, and we would do, like, different, you know, music. It was sort of like the ambassador building for our church. Well, get jealous, because it says okay. that the coffee house where she got her start was converted to our youth center in the mid-'80s. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and the youth group once got to be part of the audience for the filming of her Christmas special. Uh That's cool. There you go. Um, The youth Mm -hmm. group would sometimes have pool parties at Michael W. Smith's house in the summer. Um, One of them went one way and one went the other, and that's all I'm going to say about that. One of them does, uh, Michael W. Smith, I thought was so nice, and I'd talk to him a bit. I would bring like the disabled people I worked with to the church. Now I realize how wrong that was, but he was so nice and he has definitely gone the way of um, Christian nationalism and it sucks. Oh, well, yeah. Um, it Then then she goes on to say, our youth group was once volunteered to run the merch tables at a DeGarmo oh, and Key DeGarmo concert and at Opryland. I love that. 
<laughs> we got you to have meet no and idea, hang out. Bonnie. I'm fangirling I, you're right. for memory. I know. And Key is the like great Key. grandson <laughs> of Francis Key, who wrote, oh. yeah, Star America, get down with it. Yeah, America, get down with it. Um, Let's see. It says uh, we got to meet and hang out with the opening CCM rockabilly band Wild Blue Yonder, which was fronted by my age, Crystal (gasps) Lewis, whom I developed a huge crush on that day. Yeah. Okay. I just looked her up. I may still have that crush. (laughs) Um, Morgan Cryer did a concert at our church. I am just loving this. (laughs) Um, I got to meet his road band bass player, Doug Pinnock, who was the front man for King's X. And to me, the coolest person on earth I had met to that point in my life. And he still may be. Um, Noel Park Stuckey of Peter, Paul and Mary did Mm -hmm. a concert at our church. My dad, associate pastor at the time, got to pick him up at the airport. I got to ride with them. I remember he gave my mom a shoulder rub on the ride back, and she was embarrassed that she swooned. Not because it was Paul Stuckey. She was just tense, she said. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I just want to tell this person your name is familiar. I bet I must have known your dad. I would say 90 to 92. I was at Belmont, and the pastor, they prayed, and they started like this. um, The people that they felt were anointed in the church. It was a pretty big church, and they had like eight of us, and I was one of them. And I bet you and I could talk about some things. But what we used to have is there would be different worship groups every Sunday, and they would all have a different feel. So Michael W. Smith would do it every once in a while. And then um, another one would be these uh, Messianic Jewish-sounding, the people who thought that they were Jewish because their father is God and Jesus was Jewish and they're oh okay whatever, or maybe some Reformed Jews. So those were the real tambourine people. They loved to sing Jehovah Jireh. But it had like a different thing, and they did that so that there wouldn't be any sort of stage worship of the bands, because it was Nashville. So they made sure just a lady who only knew how to purchase a tambourine at at Target got the stage, you know, the week after someone did or whatever. Um, and I really well, enjoy nice. it keeps it, that church. It keeps it very grounded, I think. Yeah, I think they way. really tried. I'm not saying where it is now. I don't know a lot of things, but there was humility at the time I felt in the past or now there's some other people. You know, you know. It was it was probably the best one I'd been to, I'll say that. But there was a lot of um You know, that's where I met people where it'd be like, hey, you guys want to go out to Denny's? And they're like, "Uh, we need to pray about it. Now, however, (laughs) now I'm thinking they might have been, is this the best way to use the few dollars we have? So now I'm a bit embarrassed by it. But Let's go over here and talk about if we really want to go to Denny's with her. Exactly. What should we say? Well, we'll say we're praying on it. (laughs) Wow, all those names. But I recognized Amy Grant (laughs) from from, from, from our experiences with pop music coming to our church. Sandy Patty, I would have recognized, too. When they asked, hey, for the video of your wedding, we put background music. What are some songs you'd like? I said, mm-hmm. I would like Baby Baby from Amy Grant, along with a little <laughs> Michael Bolton, please. So there you go. That aged me. Here's another one from Eddie. He said, I can't remember what year it was, but let's say, quote, sometime back in the mid-1990s. My wife and I were living in Johnson City, Tennessee, pot smoking capital of America. Carmen was co- <laughs> Carmen, Carmen was coming to town in our church was recruited to provide ushers and other helpers at the concert. My wife and I were picked to count the offering. Wow. I know. Touch that money. About halfway through the, quote, free concert, Carmen got up and shared how all of this was free. 
but it was not cheap, and he needed the donations to keep the gospel train a-running. At that point, my wife and (laughs) I got up from the concert and worked our way to the counting room, which we thought would be a quick thing. When right. they we'll just count this hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Be gone. When they dumped all the buckets on the table, the first thing I noticed was all of the coins. The next thing I saw was all of the women's panties that Ew. were in the offering, along with so many notes from women with their names Ew. and phone numbers. Of okay, you can't. <laughs> you pre- can't fund. <laughs> You can't fund a concert uh, on panties? Listen, it's a trade. It's an even trade. Oh, my God. Of precisely, the notes had what they wanted to do to Carmen. If they had some alone time with him. The man from Carmen's team, who was overseeing everything, told us that this was, quote, Satan trying to pull Carmen away from his calling and destiny. (laughs) Oh, Oh my my God. I just want to say, we have done a past thing about Carmen, and if you haven't listened to it and you don't know about about his great graphic art of clocks, please go back and listen to it. (laughs) It's one of our early episodes, and we've been doing this five years now, so just keep scrolling. But Carmen, to me, I, I can understand maybe someone going like, I'm single, you're single, I'm looking for a godly man, but no. the rest of it, I, I'm just so naive. And we keep hearing about how all these, you know, whoever, Kirk Franklin and all these people were doing this stuff, but I'm just... Here's what I I'm think. I'm still naive. Here's what I think is... One woman in the audience thinks she is the only one. And so amidst all of the money and everything, she's going to be the only one who puts the note in and the underpants. She doesn't realize she has competition with all the other notes and underpants. Do you feel that the underpants were put into an envelope or... That they were just dry thrown in there. Out. I feel like they were folded up small. Okay. And somehow attached to where she wouldn't. The next person who puts money in, though, <laughs> is going to be like, huh. But it's a bucket. At- it's a bucket. Okay. So you're putting it it's in true, and it's going true. pretty far down. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I think that they think it's anonymous. But then once the dumping happens, it's like, how many panties are in here? I want, yeah, let's go rename our thing Carmen Bucket O' Panties. Cause, <laughs> and where is and Carmen? Where is, <laughs> where is a cell phone with a camera when we need it? Exactly. Yep. All right, we have one more to read here if you want to do the honors. This one is from Andrea. Hi, Bonnie and Karen. I started listening to your podcast because my brother, who began his deconstruction journey at the age of like eight years old, helped (laughs) me with my deconstruction journey many years later. He thought I would find your podcast funny and encouraging, and it has been exactly that. Thank you. Oh, my God. That's so amazing every time. Um, Thank you. So thank you. Uh, Anyhow, uh, you asked for Christian music festival stories. (laughs) I wish I had a juicy story about doing edgy things at a Christian music festival, but alas, they were very overall, very tame, milk toast experiences. I do have one memory that stands out in my mind that fits nicely into the trope regarding the lack of safety training and protocol at Christian yeah. events. Which They just sound- thought God <laughs> is just going to take care of everything. Yeah, and let's rope in people who are on staff somewhere to do shit for free. That's all kind the time. Of what is irking me. Okay. Where I grew up in rural New England, there was a summer festival that happened every August at a ski resort. In the mid-2000s, I think, I attended this festival with some friends and their parents. The main stage was set up facing the ski mountain, and people would set up blankets and chairs on the lower part of the slope to watch the concerts. It was a really great location for a concert, a a natural amphitheater. 
I remember they would also have the chairlift operating. That's funny. Um, For a fee, you could ride the chairlift to the top of the mountain where there was a small music venue devoted to worship and prayer. It cost a lot of money to ride the chairlift, and I was a broke teenager, so no mountaintop worship (laughs) experiences for me. Um, I can't remember who was performing on the main stage, but I remember sitting on the grass on the hillside watching the show when, to the right of me, people began looking up and pointing (laughs) at the chairlift. I looked over, and the chairlift had stopped running because a child had slipped out of their chair and was dangling from the chairlift. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, Um, God. Can't you protect your people? I know, and it's what's weird is they just read a letter like this, I think, on My Favorite Murder, where they dropped the kid, and they were like, fine, drop him. It's just going to land, the kid is just going to land in snow. But this is August, so now I'm Yeah, terrified. yeah, that's true. I mean, grass has a little give. Okay. I don't know why this child had been allowed to ride the chairlift alone. They looked to be about eight years old. I don't know if the bar that's supposed to be placed in front of the passenger had been closed securely, or if the operator of the the chairlift was even a resort employee. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Um, it was some wife of some associate pastor who had been yeah, roped exactly. into it. Just push <laughs> this. Are you sure, honey? Yeah, yeah after I don't you bake my What's breakfast. What's this bar? Can, yeah. <laughs> uh, but here was this kid dangling over our heads. Several oh, middle-aged men ran over and put their arms together to make a basket. The child let go, and the basket actually worked. Aww. Oh, the men caught the child, who appeared to be unharmed. The concert had paused while this little moment of manly bravery took place. Then the artist on stage thanked the folks who had saved this child's life, and then the concert resumed. I remember wow. thinking to myself, where were this child's grown-ups? Why were they allowed to ride the chairlift? How did they afford to ride the <laughs> chairlift? Uh, I don't remember seeing any EMTs or trained emergency staff uh-huh. around to check on the child or to check in with the chairlift operator. It seemed like the festival just quietly resumed. Yeah. And let me tell you, something like that happens in my daily life where I have to take people on a tour of a building and I have to operate the two-person lift which you get in, you make sure the door's closed, and then I have to always tell them, all right, when I press this button, it's going to jolt a little bit, so hang on. <laughs> and I'm like, I am Don't ill-equipped want to, to pop operate. a hit. <laughs> <That's Yeah. right. laughs> uh, if the child had actually fallen, I don't think they would have died, but they probably would have broken some bones. For sure. Glad it worked. Yeah, glad it worked out though, and that God was protecting them and had sent a crew of burly men to the concert to catch the child from their demise. I roll. I um, just want. I pictured these men like getting into action. They're like, okay, let's yeah. make a basket. What do you mean? Yeah. What's a basket? You know, when you watch the underage girls do the cheerleading performances on uh, ESPN. Yes, that one. Okay. But that um, is a basket when you catch the person. Okay. So they also say, I have one additional quick story from the same festival. Fast forward 15 years later, and my parents, now retired, volunteer every year at the festival volunteer. in the prayer tent. The prayer tent is where people with legitimate struggles in their lives seek help and counsel from people with no training in (laughs) anything related to counseling. The prayer tent also has a box where people can write down their prayer requests anonymously for the volunteers to pray over. One morning, my dad arrives at the prayer tent and unlocks the box to remove the prayer requests only to discover that a mouse had used the prayer (laughs) requests to make a nest and had given birth to several baby mice. (laughs) Being the gentle soul that he is, my dad quietly removed the box, placed the mother and nest somewhere out of the way where they wouldn't be disturbed. I'm not sure what happened to the prayer requests that the mouse had birthed all over. Maybe a more general prayer was made that day to cover the unknown requests. That's so... Now I just, of course, have taken it as a comedy plot line all the way to, like, all the people who were in the box something ended right. up happening to but there's one person sitting there in their <laughs> room alone like whatever like the prayer request was just going 
everyone else's prayers prayer. got answered, and yeah. now this mouse is in my it's house. Just, uh, my yeah. <laughs> and from that day forth, everywhere there was a mouse. <laughs> my gosh, thank you. There were you guys sent in so many that I really was yeah. going to make the crux of everything about the music festivals. But when we got this many letters, I was just like, let's hit some high notes yeah. saying, guess what? There were some festivals and then get to reading all of them. We really yeah. appreciate everyone jumping in on this. And I'll tell you, I do. I loved a good festival. And it was a great place for if you're a Christian and you couldn't or weren't allowed or didn't want to go to the heathen places... Yeah. You could do this. You could be on the fringe of heathen <laughs> at those festivals easily. Well, obviously, from that one letter that the guy yeah. wrote about the frequency being terrible, um, I guess <laughs> you were doing the devil's work. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for these letters. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is make a playlist for Bonnie to listen to by next week with all the artists that you mentioned. We appreciate Please. it. Oh, please, yes. Please send faster, me that list. Make it more? Okay. Uh, so you're really going to enjoy some of these. And thank you again. You guys can go to our website, deconversiontherapypodcast.com, and you can see where you can suggest a topic for us to do. Send yeah. us links if you know any good stories. Write us a funny, true story about growing up in religion and church, even if you're still in it. Uh, we appreciate all that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. 